on time. Diogo, go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So today we're going to have Dr. Michael Lumintaglo join us and present. He's a medical doctor from Indonesia. He did two masters, one in pathobiology and neurosurgery. While he was already in his residency at University of Utah, postgraduate doctoral program, um, then he came here to Mayo Clinic in 2019. And uh, as of now, he's faculty University of Palangaraya in Indonesia. Tons of awards and honors, first place award at the World Federation of Neurologi Neurosurgical Sciences, member to uh, multiple national, international, uh, American and neuro neurosurgical societies. Um, tremendous contribution to the literature, including papers with our own team when he was with us here in 2019. And um, Today, he will be talking to us about starting a neurosurgical service in central Borneo, Indonesia. Challenges, creativities, innovations, and other aspects. Dark Q. And just at a personal level, Michael, it's been such a great pleasure to see you growing and to see the things that you're doing, you know, all the way up to Indonesia and, and watch you in, not only in social media, between LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, and Instagram and just see the kind of things that you're doing. It really inspires us to try to be better physicians, better surgeons and better, you know, ambassadors from the Mayo Clinic to the rest of the world. And this is how we obviously with, with our own work with Mission Brain, it gets us excited about our future and doing something with you. So without any further, you know, we'll take it away and please enlighten us. We do this talks that are quite short just to is about making sure that we plant seeds and we ignite the fire of people's limbic system so we're excited about that with you thank you uh, thank you so much uh, professor q uh, i would like to check uh, is there a, any problem with my slide no you're yeah. looking great you're looking thank very you. very good you're perfect okay. right there thank you so much thank you so much okay um, good morning, all. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you to Professor Q and the team and for, for the opportunity. And allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael Mintang. Yeah, I'm an honorary surgeon. I'm a part of Silam Group under Professor Eka Kim and my, my honor Professor Iskandar. And also, I'm a lecturer uh, at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Palangkaraya. Uh, here's uh, all the name of uh, Indonesian. Uh, Siloam Indonesian Neurosurgery Team. And without further ado, this morning, I will share my experience uh, in starting my neurosurgery service in Central Borneo, Palangkara, Indonesia. Please don't expect too much um, because I'm, uh, what I'm presenting is how a neurosurgeon practice in a, in a limited area, which of course doesn't contain complicated uh, surgical technique but it has own challenges and including uh, in the ethical aspect. Uh, the following is uh, Silam Neurosurgery teams uh, spread across Indonesia. Uh, thank you for the support from the whole team. Uh, we know we work in team, uh, we get uh, much more team multiply. Uh, before I start this, uh, I have no conflict of interest to disclose. And here, here is the hospital where I work now, uh, Silam Hospital Palangkaraya. Sorry. Uh, uh, it's only three years old. And this is the Faculty of Medicine, University of Palangkaraya. Uh, it's only two, uh, 12 years old. And uh, this is our anatomy room. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, very simple and even though uh, there are many obstacles, uh, we are trying to start uh, to try to make a cadaveric models with silicon coloring uh, for practice the section of uh, nervous system. Uh, here, a uh, flashback to eight years ago uh, when I was a neurosurgeon resident, uh, I read uh, this book, Smidek, written by the author Professor Alfred Yokinines and Ever since that day, I followed the profile of Professor Q and I was hoping one day I could meet, learn and see life surgery of Professor Q. Uh, it's very... And then in June 2019, I flew, uh, I flew from Indonesia to Jet. Uh, that's about 10,236 miles. It take about 20 to 25 hours in flight, excluding the flight waiting time, right? And I made it uh, to the gate of my clinic, yes, okay, and plan my country flight. 
as the first Indonesian doctor to do observation uh, at Mayo Clinic Jakarta. And I got this quote when I saw Professor Q in the operating room. Hi Mike, hi Mike. Uh, seeing how to do in right once is better than doing wrong a hundred times. Thank you, Prof. Here's some photo when I was at my clinic, Jackson, uh, very proud and an un honor to learn from the rep a reputable institution like yours. I attend Rotten Dissection Microsurgery Endoscopic Training and I saw operation of Professor Q, Dr. Talk to the Saisana and Spine Surgery from Dr. Chen, uh, weekly cardiovascular dissection, how Professor Q treat the patient with, uh, with heart and in the outpatient setting and I get the opportunity to do research there. And this is my first GNS journal. Uh, thank you for your believing in me to make it possible and thank you. Okay, uh, currently, uh, uh, currently uh, practice, uh, I currently practice a neurosurgery in Siam Hospital Parakaraya. Siam Parakaraya, uh, Central Bruni, Indonesia. Where is the Pankaraya? Uh, this is the map of uh, South Asia. South Asia, this is the Indonesia. South East Asia. Uh, and this big island is Borneo or Kalimantan. This one. Okay. This area, uh, this area is the central Borneo, which is the province with the largest area, about 59,000 square mile, miles. Uh, it's about 90% of area of Florida and with a population about 2.6 million. It's about 13% of Florida population. 80% uh, of its area consists of dense forest and peatland swamp, mangrove, river, and traditional agricultural land. Uh, in this area, we have two neurosurgeons uh, with different hospital and Borneo uh, it is often known as Amazon of Indonesia. Uh, you can see the photo from uh, of the Daya tribe, uh, native people of Borneo, uh, Borneo Lar, uh, Lar rivers. And here's the, the Borneo crocodile. Uh, it's about five meter length. You can see the comparison with the human size. Uh, and we have a sanctuary of orangutan. Uh, there are great apes native to the rainforest of Indonesia. Of Indonesia. I start in September 2020. Uh, this is my hospital. Uh, I was lucky to start with uh, several diagnostic facilities like X-ray and CT scan, but we don't have any. Uh, we don't have the MRI. If an MRI was needed, the patient has to be referred uh, to. Uh, to another city uh, for round trip, uh, it takes about 10 hours. Uh, for surgical facilities, we have three operating rooms uh, with CRM, and we have the uh, we have a, cas a capacity of 100 bed, but only 50 rooms are active, and five bed in ICU unit. At first, I had to think and bring my own equipment. Uh, such as surgical lobe and headlamp, uh, basic uh, craniotomy set and basic laminectomy set, and uh, use a headset brace to perform the bird hole during the craniotomy. Uh, I got these all tools by asking for help for my friend, my resident friend from abroad, uh, to buy them for me, and I send the money. Here are some of the challenges in my area. Uh, the first one is the area is very wide and the road is uh, rocky. Uh, the population is uh, scattered population and we have to do long referrals. Uh, it takes a long referrals time, average six to 12 hours by car to our hospitals uh, with minimal facilities and knowledge of referrals. Uh, the population, uh, the socioeconomic pro problem is there mostly are uh, middle to lower class and uh, we, we don't have enough uh, diagnostic facility, limited uh, diagnostic facilities. We don't have MRI, EEG, MEG. Uh, the closest facilities was uh, 
10 to 12 hours round trip from our hospitals. Um, and we don't have uh, enough uh, surgery equipment facilities and difficult to find blood from the donor. Sometimes the operation still has to be, to be done uh, without blood because uh, it's emergency case and untrained paramedical resources for neurosurgery cases. Therefore, uh, as a neurosurgeon, we have to think how to provide good quality neurosurgical services, which is still affordable using technology uh, that it's cost friendly, of course, and effective surgical technique uh, should be done, but still safe and uh, ethical. Uh, I think it's like a painter who has to paint with only two colors, limited colors, black and white. Uh, how do the best painter paint with the limited colors? A painter should be creative, innovative, and skilled. Uh, this is the, the pillar of bioethics. Uh, the first one is autonomy. Uh, there is a seed from paternalism to auto, autonomy. Uh, uh, it is the act of uh, the act and the willingness of the patient taking decision in their healthcare. Patients should be well informed of the benefit, risk, and possible alternative management. The second one is uh, no malfeasance. Above all, do no harm. Uh, there is some patient whom we cannot uh, help them. The third one is beneficent. Don't fix it if it's not broken uh, or don't do intervention that are unnecessary. The fourth one is justice. Justice is described as uh, what is uh, fair or deserved. Neurosurgeon is expected to be honest to his patient in all deals. Uh, there is no other area in medicine uh, that is faced with the challenges of ethics like neurosurgery. Uh, these challenges are worse for neurosurgeon practicing in the limited area due to a lack of infrastructure, long and risky referral process, healthcare investment uh, in minimum, uh, training programs, uh, patient is referred in the bad way and the patient outcome will be worse. Other special issue is uh, the social or, or cultural problem, religious belief, uh, and pro the property related to the expensive uh, referral fee and daily living costs. Um, low education, uh, sometimes doctor explain everything A to Z, A to Z, and the patient and family remain that don't understand. Um, lack of uh, health equipment. Uh, most of neurosurgical patients in the limited setting are neurotrauma. Uh, this is my statistic. Uh, most of these patients are unconsciousness, unconsciousness and uh, this affects the patient autonomy. And the autonomy of this patient is also affected by the social cultural factor, uh, example, uh, gender inequality. A neurosurgeon must be familiar with the condition, even if the emergency situation. Um, we still have to wait for the family process. We must to be uh, we must be good in communication, explaining, uh, as well as be be careful with the consequences. Uh, this is the the non malnutrition aspect of neurosurgery in limited area. Neurosurgeon in limited area lack train or manpower. Uh, it's come, uh, it, 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 it can cause uh, this reduce the safety of neurosurgical procedure when compared with the modern uh, city. The neurosurgeon uh, face ethical challenge of to reward or to manage the patient, the challenges to transfer the patient in emergency condition or inability of the patient to be referred because of social economy aspect. Okay, this is the same, uh, the example case of my case. Uh, brain tumor, uh, female 44 years old, complained about decrease of consciousness, uh, history of uh, life hemiparesis with chronic progressive headaches. Uh, its onset is, uh, is about three years and getting worse in the last one year. Uh, the patient came from the village around uh, 10, uh, 10 hours from our hospital, was treated by, uh, very fiercely by neurologists uh, with ischemic stroke without any CT scan. Uh, 
in in the ORR, we get the VGA for the patient is 12, and we give the dexamethasone 10 milligram and the manitol 250 cc loading dose, and the the GTS become better 14. And uh, the the family request doesn't want to be referred because economic reason I'm not sure, uh, but the family confident in asking for surgery, uh, still one surgery with all the risks. This is the radiology of the patient. Uh, this is a, a okay. As a doctor, we are uh, we are uh, as a doctor we are ethically required to be honest, uh, explain the risk of the surgery and our capabilities and equipment, but we must show the seriousness in giving our best to treat the, the disease and the patient and family will, uh, will see it. So the, the, patient, the patient and the family become confident in trusting their life on us, even they are ready to accept the worst scenario. Um, as a neurosurgeon, I believe to, uh, uh, I have to be creative and create uh, my own tool to overcome the problem. If I use the manual bore Hudson breath technique, it will make my operation take so long and bleed a lot. Um, in my place, uh, is it difficult to get uh, blood, a limited stock? Uh, I, decided, I decided to make my own tools by modifying the uh, a regular hand reel. Uh, this is the regular hand reel. This is the regular hand reel. And this is the, the, the bore. Uh, I, I used to operate my patient here. We did the tumor removal. Maybe this bone opening is little too wide, but in my opinion, this is the best and the safe uh, way uh, with limiting uh, limited tools. Okay, uh, we get uh, we succeed to do uh, gross total resection with the pathology pseudomatous meningioma. Uh, this is the post-operative follow-up uh, day 11. Uh, we have done the, 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 the CT scan post-op. We get the gross total removal. The patient was happy and just realized that she never had uh, ischemic stroke. Uh, this is the problem in, in my area. Healthcare unit uh, investment is very, very expensive in our country. Uh, for us in Indonesia, for example, for this panthera microscope uh, with low spec, low spec uh, is around 540,000 USD now. And uh, this is another a complicated, uh, sophisticated uh, device. I think it takes a lot. And again, as a neurosurgeon, I have to be creative and create tools to overcome the problems. I try to make the an ex exoscope to help the magnification and recording. Uh, I tried. Uh, lead, uh, I learned a little about uh, the principles of lens focus, lens, lens working distance, and camera sensor, and both the equipment and spare part from from a board. And this is my 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 exoscope. It's not perfect, but it's work. This is the example uh, case. Uh, uh, spinal tumor, uh, a spinal tumor, female, 42 years old, complaining about low back pain uh, with progressive uh, radicular pain, T12 uh, and L1, uh, not related to the position, pressure, uh, and, uh, and pain all time. Uh, the onset is one year, getting worse in the one month, and patient have history treated conservatively with, the, uh, with physiotherapies by neurologists in Jakarta and Banjarmasin suspected uh, its NP based on the X-ray only. Uh, I encouraged them, uh, her to get uh, MRI in Banjarmasin, Banjarmasin and nearest city with the MRI facilities. It takes about 12 hours around three. And surprisingly, the patient came back and asked for surgery with no instrumentation. I don't know what is the reason uh, she came back. This is the radiology of uh, the patient. Uh, we see uh, uh, we see a spinal tumor around T uh, twelve to L one. Uh, we did the hemilaminotomy tumor removal. This is the 
the condition are in the operating room, we use the LED TV to display a camera image and this uh, an image is got by the camera. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we succeed to the uh, gross total resection uh, with pathology transfection of meningioma. This is the, the surgery design to do the hemilaminotomy tumor removal. Uh, this is the, uh, the post-operative follow-up uh, POD11 of the patient. Uh, we get uh, to uh, gross total removal, no deficit, uh, no neurology deficit, and the patient was happy and surprised because the surgery could be, uh, could be done here. Uh, when I start in this area, most people are unwilling to have uh, brain surgery even if they have to accept the risk of dying. Um, most, people, uh, most people think that uh, people who get brain surgery will die and it's all pointless. Uh, as a neurosurgeon in the area with close uh, social cultural aspect, uh, the failure and the success of operations spread uh, very quickly and it was very easy to be used as a reference to, uh, for future operating decision uh, by the community. I have to be, be careful when we do the explanation and inform consent uh, of the operation. Sometimes when we are unlucky, uh, we have to deal with, with the customary law of the community. When the bad thing or misunderstanding happen to the family and patient, uh, for example, uh, my colleagues, uh, she is a pulmonologist, uh, there is nothing wrong with everything she does, but uh, according to customary law, the patient and family still demand for punishment. This is for the intermezzo. Uh, we need to understand the, the characteristic of uh, society. This is the history of Borneo headhunters. Uh, the Daya people believe that uh, the human head holds the significant powers. Uh, various kinds of Daya tribes have a tradition to hunt head for ceremonies of children become adult uh, when fighting privately or um, uh, fighting between tribe uh, or consider the head as a trophy. Um, they even cut off the head of the children and the women. Uh, this is a traditional Dayak weapon. Uh, weapon. Uh, this is uh, mandal. Uh, the hole, um, the hole on the side of the the sword. This uh, showing the number of head that have been cut off with this weapon. But, uh, okay, this is the, the, the following was the incident uh, is uh, about 21 years ago in central Borneo in my area. Uh, there is a conflict between, uh, between tribes. Uh, at least 300 Maduraris was decapitated uh, by the Dayak during the conflict. Uh, you can see this is the, the picture of uh, a lot of uh, human head uh, in, the, in the area, in the environment. Okay. But it's okay, uh, they are very friendly and I love it. It's not like the, the, the picture I show you before. Okay, uh, this is the, the, for example, for the uh, my patient, uh, from my patient, uh, brain tumor, uh, posterior fossa tumor, female 28 years old, complain about decreased consciousness and uh, history of ataxia and chronic progressive headaches with, with, with visual disturbance. Uh, the onset is for, uh, for four months and getting worse decrease on, uh, decrease on consciousness in, one, in the last one week. Uh, the patient came from the village, it's our from our hospital, and he had been suggested surgery by other hospital, uh, my friend in, in this, uh, in this uh, area, but the family was still doubtful. And the objective uh, in the emergency room, the GTS the patient, it was 13. Uh, they can become, uh, because they were suggested by their local friend who had surgery with me, and at that time, not willing to be referred, uh, and the family uh, need time to prepare for their needs uh, in the referral city in the future. 
Uh, this is the radiology. Uh, this is the posterior fossa tumors. Uh, we did uh, we did a VP shine and posterior decompression to prevent upward herniation, herniation uh, and also try to debug and remove uh, of the tumor as much as possible. Uh, so the patient have time to prepare uh, flying to another city after getting better. Uh, this was not a perfect operation, I think, but this uh, this was the optimal thing I can do considering the complication and the limiting uh, limitation of my equipment. Uh, I couldn't see uh, very deep because my headlamp doesn't reach that depth. Uh, this was POD8, uh, POD8 in the CT scan. There was still uh, blood residue here, blood residue and surgical, uh, and surgical, my, my uh, surgical layer and swelling of the cerebellum. Um, I think it's a complete removal. It's, it's about 70% uh, to 75%, I think. And, uh, but the, hap the happiest thing is cerebral mutism didn't occur and the head was negative. Uh, ataxia improved and the nystagmus relief with baclofen 5 mg CDS. Uh, the patient family accept uh, the remaining tumor according to the informed consent. Uh, satisfied with the result, the pathology was medulloblastoma. Uh, we have great, uh, it, WSO uh, grade four, and the family prepared for uh, prepared to leave the island uh, for uh, for their treatment, radio, radiotherapy or radio surgery. Uh, this is the beneficent uh, measure in my area. A continuation of the, the treatment in the uh, in patient with the financial problem and who doesn't have heart insurance. Even when the medical expansion was covered, the family must still prepare for the finance for daily life, uh, life uh, which is not covered by insurance. Uh, this is very common in limited area with low social economic status. Uh, the resources of the, the neurosurgeon may not be able to take care of this case. Yes. For the conclusion, uh, neurosurgery practice in the limited setting is associated with uh, many ethical issues. Uh, this ethical issue arises as a result of uh, uh, peculiarities of neurosurgery and also of the characteristics of environment. The neurosurgeon working in the limited area should be uh, should familiarize himself. Uh, this is the idea or the idea of promising technology that can be used in the limited area. Uh, I saw in the, uh, from the China, uh, China commerces, we can buy uh, uh, endoscopic, uh, endoscopic camera and, and endoscopic uh, lens in an uh, affordable price. Uh, this is, it can be used in limited area, but we have to train uh, to improve our skill to operation with uh, endoscopic assisted microsurgery to manage the uh, of brain tumors. Uh, of course, we see the person with the greater details uh, like uh, this apparatus I see when I, I source in the internet in the US, I think it's very useful. Uh, of course, uh, I never see and I, for, uh, I look for a book on neurosurgery in limited area. I think until now it's, uh, it's not, uh, I never see the, the book like that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your believing in me and invest the best in me. Thank you. When you said, Michael, that we don't have a book in limited areas, I, you, you just sparked this fire in my limbic system because I've been thinking for a while and I just turned over to JP right here who I was going to have him comment and then I'm going to have Selby also who raised his hand. But the JP has been jumping on the beat right here. JP, you want to comment about some of these amazing surgeries and the things that Michael is doing since you've done a lot of surgery also abroad. Yeah. I mean, Michael, good to see you and uh, congratulations on your work. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I'm not surprised uh, with, with what you've been doing because I mean, uh, I know what you're able to, but it's, you know, it's always fantastic to see. I mean, I was astonished to see your creativity with the exoscope that you, you know, studied the physics, physics and kind of like bought the, the details and, and did it all. 
and kind of like it reminded me a bit like uh, when I was in Brazil and doing surgeries by yourself and <laughs> positioning and doing surgery and being our own scrub tech and getting all the things, you know, very differently. Uh, but I think that you translate very well. Like I, was, I saw something yesterday. I honestly don't remember who saw who said this, but was that the surgery is not about the instruments. It's actually about, uh, you know, your hands and your ability to translate your knowledge into into that. And then the instruments are just a, a path and you've been fantastic in, into, into leading that. Uh, and I wanted to, it, it's fantastic to see as well that even though we call like now resource uh, limited settings, I'm sure that for you as well, in the last 10 years, the pictures of the hospital that you showed us, I'm sure it's much better than what you had 10 years ago. So it's also very nice to see that even in, let's call resource limited settings, things have been improving as well over time. But uh, I mean, honestly, like as Dr. Q saw me, like, uh, I'm still astonished with your creativity with the, with the exoscope and with the drills. Uh, I mean, just congratulations. Uh, for me, just to share a story, the most difficult point was kind of like how to control bleeding when we don't have the things we need to control bleeding. Like how to control bleeding when we don't have a bovi monopolar and when we don't have a bipolar. And I, as I was a PGY3, I was thinking, oh, if we don't have a bovi, you got you to gotta use bone wax. But what do you do when you don't have a bovi and you don't have a bone wax? <laughs> then it's kind of like it's a lot of compression for hours. <laughs> and then it's praying, you know, whatever is your religion. But uh, congratulations. I mean, uh, as Dr. Q said, I think uh, there is a, definitely a fantastic space to build uh, educational projects into such a, you know, limited, so-called limited resource settings. But uh, the resources, I think, are super well compensated by the creativity and, and uh, gifted personnel, such as yourself and many others around the globe. So congratulations on your work. Thank you so much. Thank you so as much. As I pivot to uh, Selby, once again, I challenge you, Michael and JP, for us to work in a book for developing okay. countries, the, the pearls and, you know, yeah. and, and tribulations yeah. of surgery in developing countries. So, Selby, go ahead. Well, Michael, it's great to see you again. Uh, thank you for an excellent talk. Um, hi, hi. Yeah, so, you know, I'm always very impressed at how um, surgeons in, in uh, other countries are able to perform really complex uh, operations in less luxurious and less privileged uh, conditions than we have here. So it makes me grateful for what we do have. Um, you know, when you talk about starting a neurosurgery, really neurosurgery department, uh, obviously it requires a lot of financial investment from the hospital. Um, here in the United States, we can do that because there are certain uh, economic incentives for the hospital to start a surgical department. How, how are you able to convince you know, a hospital in Borneo to um, start such a department or start a, um, a program there. Uh, are there similar economic incentives or is it really just because there is that much of a need uh, in that area? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Um, uh, this is the, the, the big problem for Indonesia because Indonesia have a very big, uh, a very big area, very, very, very big. Uh, and uh, the budget of these 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 uh, uh, sophisticated equipment, we have to uh, wait for the turn uh, to get these 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 kind of things because uh, the budget was limited. But I think uh, if we wait for uh, for uh, all kind of these things, I think we we delay to serve the patient, and because of that, we have to uh, creative and. Uh, uh, try to do something uh, or try a little thing to do make it better. Uh, I think this is the, the problem. And uh, for my institution, uh, and my institution was planned to give me a, a, a like microscope, but, but I think it may be the end of uh, next year, next year. And because of, uh, yeah, because it's very expensive in Indonesia, uh, it's around like 540,000. Yes, like this. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Selby. Thank Go you. ahead, Selby. Yeah, thank you. I mean, once again, just reinforce, according to Key Park, who leads the Harvard Global Surgery, you know, endeavors, who's become a dear friend and someone who I have learned to admire and, and learn about all his work, there's an estimated 5 million people a year that lack access to neurosurgical care around the world. 
all right, both brain and spine. And we need about 23,000 neurosurgeons providing that care. So for every patient, you know, that we take care of in these parts of the world, there's a lot more that need care that just, they just never had access to, you know, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's challenging and it's difficult, but it is a reality, you know, and it's actually, you sometimes you don't even have to go too far, even in our own country, in the United States, you'll be surprised how many people die a year because of a subdural and epidural, they just, and in a hospital where there's no neurosurgical care and, uh, and our concentrations are mainly in the coasts and the East Coast and the West Coast for neurosurgeons. So I think it's, we have a tremendous opportunity and need, and this is why you see a lot of people from all over the world right here, joining us every Monday, participating in this. So we're looking forward, Michael, to doing a one a chapter in Indonesia for Mission Brain 2 visiting with you. I know that this is how you got in touch with us originally to the foundation and to be able to do something together. So we're looking it's forward to- It's not our purpose, it's honest. Beautiful. I, I I look at the comments from Vishal Patel. You know, this was an incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, JP. Amazing work. Gabriel Vargas, congratulations on your dedicated work. JP Navarro, thank you, Dr. Lumin Tag. Your work is amazing. You can see the comments flying through the chat. So we thank you. And then, uh, Carlos, do we have his plaque? Do we have a picture of the plaque that we made for Michael? Are we sending it to him? Where do we stand with that? We're, we're, we got the plaque ready in the office and it should be on, on its way to Indonesia. All right. Michael, we're looking forward to seeing your office next time when you join us and you okay. know, stay right behind you. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Uh, uh, very generous. Thank you. Great. And then, uh, Andres, what's the, what's the schedule, you know, um, for uh, today for Michael? Does he have some meetings coming up? Yeah, he's going to meet with the residents immediately after this. Once we hang, hang up, then he's going to meet with Dr. Grewal, uh, with Dr. Chen, and then he's meeting with us fellows and then with you. Excellent. Beautiful. Well, I can see more comments right there from Ruchika. Building the $600 exoscope is amazing. Truly can change neurosurgical practice in less fortunate countries. Alex, thank you for your presentation. Luisa, thank you so much. Very inspiring. So thank you, Michael, for you know, igniting the uh, limbic system in a lot of people right here, you know, because that's what it's going to take the next generation to be able to change the innovation that all of you guys are doing. So great. Sorry for holding you guys a few extra minutes, but Michael, thank you for dedicating part of your day to meeting and I'll see you in a little bit, you know, and David Miller already, he wants to be part of the book, you know, I can <laughs> see him. So yeah, I think what was great. <laughs> well, Alrighty. I think you know. I think yes. I think there's a I think there's a role for you know we could, making use of the imaging that you have. Yes. You know, we used before MR and CT. We used to do lots of things mm -hmm. uh, with radiographs and fluoro, and you know we've lost those skills in 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 in, in, in our country because we have advanced imaging everywhere. Uh, I love but, you know, it. There are places you don't have it. Yeah, I love it, Dave. So yeah, JP and I and, and Michael are getting ideas already here. So very good. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a little bit, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.